Hello everyone, welcome back. Thanks for being here. Today we're gonna be doing my YA releases for the next month that sound cool to me. So Goodreads provides a list every single month for the books coming out in the next month that fall under the YA genre. This can mean thrillers, contemporaries, you name it, it's all gonna be there. Um, so I <laughs> make a video every month about the books coming out for that next month. That sounded interesting to me. I don't include every single book from the list because that would be way too long and not all the books sound interesting to me. So I will be linking all the books or all the list down below so that you can look at it yourself and you can make your own decisions. January is pretty much promising to be a very, very good month for releases. I'm so excited for a lot of them and I cannot wait to share it with you. A bit of a disclaimer, you know, as we are still in the midst of the pandemic in the world right now, um, a lot of publishing has been affected by that. So maybe the books I'm talking about in this video may be getting changed for publishing dates, but as far as I know for right now, it is being released next month. So now that I got out of that out of the way, we're going to get into it. There's a lot of sequels coming out next month. There's a lot of really just interesting sounding books. So let's get into it. I took notes on my phone because I'm a good booktuber. <laughs> okay, so first we have Lore by Alexandra Bracken. This is being published on the 5th of January, and this is a YA Greek mythology retelling. And Alexandra Bracken is pretty much known for her Darkest Minds trilogy. I haven't read that series. I don't really don't plan on reading a series, but I do have one of the book by her, and it's called The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Writing, I think. I think so, which I'm very excited to get to, but she is a very well-known published author. So this is like a really good release from her so far. So it says, every seven years the Aegon, Agon, I'll put it on the screen, I don't really know how to pronounce it, um, begins, where nine Greek gods are forced to walk the earth as mortals and be hunted by the descendants of ancient bloodlines who want to steal the gods' power and become gods themselves. So our main character's name is Lore, and she fled that life because her parents were murdered by one of those descendants of those bloodlines and as the hunt approaches a childhood friend and the goddess Athena seek her help to defeat certain people but Laura soon realizes that a bond with the goddess Athena may not be the best thing and may not end in the greatest way. So I am so excited for this book. I really just love Greek mythology like I really just end up enjoying it. I end up giving it four stars or higher so I'm really excited to read this book. This is being published on January 5th if I didn't say that before. Okay. <laughs> Next we have A Vow So Bold and Jed Deadly by Bridget Kemmerer. This is the third and final book in the Curse Breaker series, which the first book is called A Curse So Dark and Lonely, which I actually have. I wonder if you're going to be able to see it. No, you're not. Actually, yeah, it's right here. <laughs> I read that book earlier this year and I gave that five stars. It is like in my top two, if not my top favorite YA fantasy of the year. I read it and I absolutely loved it. The first book, I'm not going to summarize the last book. So the first book is about, um, our two main characters named Ren and Harper. Ren is a, oh, I should say, this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but it's way darker than the actual original Disney film. So let's get into the synopsis again. Sorry about the interruption, but um, our main characters name are Ren and Harper, and Ren is cursed by an enchantress to become a beast at the end of every um, winter. So the way that the curse works is that he's only doomed to repeat every autumn and winter. At the end of every winter, he kills everything and everyone around him except for him and his lead um, guard named Grey. They're the only ones that cannot die in that world. So if he doesn't have a girl fall in love with him, it gets restarted and he has to live through the autumn and winter again at the end of the season, killing everyone and everything around him. Um, Harper is life is difficult. Her dad just recently died. Her mother is very sick with cancer on her deathbed and her brother is has always underestimated her because she has cerebral palsy and she um has to walk with a cane. So she her brother kind of views her as like a very fragile person who can't do most things that a regular person can. And she is soon pulled into Ren's world and she is faced with a dilemma that Ren is also facing of whether if she stays, she has a um danger of being killed or she has to find a way to the mortal world or whether she allows herself to fall in love with Ren or not. So I loved that book. I haven't gotten to the second book yet. It's called, I have it right behind me again, but I'm going to hopefully get to that soon. But this book I'm so excited for. It really just is such an amazing YA fantasy. And it's really surprising too, because a lot of people that I follow who mostly read like high adult fantasies, high adult fantasy, <laughs> um, not high adult fantasy, adult high fantasy um sorry but um 
actually enjoyed that book a lot. So that's that's amazing to me because it really is getting the recognition that it deserves. And I feel like everyone should read that book because I just absolutely loved it. And that is being published on January 26th. Next we have We Free the Stars by Hafsa Faisal. This is published on January 19th. This is the second book in the... What is the series called? I'm not sure. It's a sequel to We Hunt the Flame, which is a really popular YA release. Haven't read that yet either, but I really do want to read it, so that's why this book is on my radar for next month. And the first book is about um, our main character's name is Zafira, and she has, and she's called the Hunter. So she disguises herself as a man to travel between um, dangerous lands to help feed her people. And Nasir is our other main character, and he is the Prince of Death. He assassinates anyone who goes against his father, who is the king or sultan, because it's based in that Middle Eastern world. Um, so war is brewing and Zavira has to go on a quest to go and retrieve a special artifact and Asir is also on the mission but the other stipulation is that he has to kill Zafira. But an ancient evil serves as they embark on the journey and the prize that they may want to and the prize that they may want may bring about more trouble than they think. So once again, haven't read that book, really, really want to. I'm excited to read it, but I'm also excited for the second book coming out. And the covers in this series, impeccable. Amazing. Read it. Next we have Winter Keep by Christian Kishore. This is published on January 19th and this is the fourth book in the Graceling realm. Um, the first book is called The Graceling. I read it this year. So I can't really summarize the series because the books don't follow a very like specific characters. Like there is one character from the first book. Her name is Bitter Blue and that's who this book is about. But I can't like describe the series because it's four books in and they don't follow the same plot every single book. So... I can't give a good summary because they're not related. So sorry about that. But it is coming quite farther after the third and final book came out. So this was a surprise to everyone. But the cover's got a revamp. It looks amazing. And I'm excited to read it because I am on the second book in the series right now, which is called Fire. Um, so sorry I can't give you a synopsis, but that's kind of what <laughs> is going on with that. Next we have Written in Starlight by Isabel Ibanez, um, which is published on January 26th. This is the second book, sequel to... Woven in the Moonlight, which I haven't read yet, but I really do want to. Um, it is on my want to buy list. It's on my Amazon wish list as we speak. So this, the first book is based on Bolivian politics and history. So um, once again, I can't give the synopsis for the second book. I'm going to give it for the first book. Um, our main character's name is Himena, and, or Himena, and she's a stand-in for the last remaining royal. And she has a gift of spinning thread for Moonlight. And when someone demands the last royal's hand in marriage, who is also, like, the bad guy in the story, um, Jimena goes in her place. She wants to find the relic that belongs to that person that she is being forced to marry and standing for the last royal. As she goes on her journey, people keep challenging her, and it becomes more complicated, and she could overthrow evil without starting a war, but that would mean betrayal to the person, only person who can trust her, so... It sounds like it's a really good political drive fantasy book and I'm really excited to read it and a second book's coming out. So if you've already read it and you're waiting for the second book to come out, it's coming out next month. So read it. <laughs> next up we have Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. This is published on January 19th and it's set in San Francisco's Chinatown during the Red Scare. Um, our main character's name is Lily Hugh and she's 17 years old and she meets Kathleen after walking by a lesbian club called the Telegraph Club. And during that time, it's not considered normal for people or for girls to be in love, especially in Chinatown. Um, during that time, Chinese Americans are facing discrimination because it is during the Red Scare. People are afraid of communism. And Lily's father is facing deportation, even though he had gained his citizenship a long time ago. Lily and Catherine kind of are on the road of facing discrimination and risking everything just to be in love with each other. So I'm so excited for this sapphic romance set in a very, very rough time for a lot of Chinese people, so I'm excited for that a lot. <laughs> Next we have One of the Good Ones by... I don't remember their name. It's two different authors and their sisters, I think. I'll write it on the screen. I just... it blanked on my mind. That is published on January 5th, and it's about um, a YA contemporary about... Our main character's name is Kezi, and she... Um, is a teen social activist and she mysteriously died under a social justice rally and her sister happy and her family are left devastated um as kezi becomes another victim in the fight against police brutality she begins happy begins to question the 
way her sister is being remembered as an, one of the good ones and like will classify someone as good when she died under such horrible circumstances. Um, so her sister Happy and her sister Jenny embark on a journey to honor this, their sister Kezi in their own way using a book as their guide and they find out a twist to Kezi's story that will change everything. So that's a little bit of mystery in there too and I'm just so excited for this. I think that everyone needs to be reading books like this right now. We all need to diversify our reading and I'm very excited to be reading a book by a black owned, by a black author. Um, and it just sounds really interesting too. It sounds like it's going to be really, really rough and I'm ready for it. I'm ready to cry. So perfect, right? Next we have This Will Be Funny Someday by um, Katie Henry. This is going to be published on January 19th and it says... 16 year old Izzy is used to keeping things to herself and doesn't feel like she can use her voice until she stumbles upon a stage in a stand up comedy club and performs. Izzy meets Mo, who is 19, and he is a college student, and he introduces her to his friends and also to this Chicago open mic stand up club. Um, but she tells all of her new friends that she is a college student like them, so she has to juggle two lives as a good high school girl to her family, but also a college kid to her new friends. And once those things come together, she, all of her lies that came along with those two things and were crashing down on her. And I'm just so excited for this. I know that Emma Books talked about this a lot because she likes Kitty Henry's writing. I've never read anything by her, but I really want to read it. So I'm excited about that. Next we have Into the Heartless Wood, which is published on January 12th. It says a story about impossible love between a monstrous tree siren and a boy who lives at the edge of her wood. If that doesn't pull you in right away, then I don't know what will. Um, it says... For centuries, a witch has harvested souls to feed the heartless tree, using its power to grow her domain. When Owen Merrick is lured into the woods one night, one of the witch's tree siren daughters, Seren, saves his life. And every night he climbs over the garden wall to see her, and every night the longing to become a human deepens for Seren. Um, a shift in the stars foretells a dangerous curse, and Seren's quest to become human will lead them to an ancient war raging between the witch and, between the witch and a king who is trying to stop her. This sounds so amazing. I'm so excited to read it. Hopefully it's going to be so good. I'm excited for this one. So next we have Every Single Lie, published January 12th, and it says, Nobody in Beckett's life seems to be telling her the truth. She feels like her boyfriend Jake is cheating on her um, as he becomes more secretive. And one day Beckett finds the body of a newborn baby in Jake's gym bag. Rumors spread that Beckett is the mother and everyone in her town is ready to believe the worst of her. And as the police investigation unfolds, Beckett discovers that Everyone has secrets, and to the truth can alter everything she thought that she knew, which sounds like it's going to be hard again, and yeah. Really rough topics in there. Don't really have much to say about that other than that, though, so anyway. And lastly, we have The Girls I've Been by Tess Sharp. This is published on January 26th, and it says, Nora O'Malley is a daughter of a con artist who targets criminal men. And as her mom falls in love with one of their marks, Nora has to pull the biggest con in her life, which is escaping her mom. Five years later, Nora's playing it normal now she goes to the bank with one of her friends to deposit a fundraiser money check. A bank robbery and sees the bank robbers have no idea who they're holding hostage. This sounds so cool. I'm so excited for this bad bitch con artist turned good like kind of thing. And I'm just so excited to see her like pummel these guys. I'm going to love it. But yeah. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. That's everything. Um, there is like 36 books coming out total, so I will leave the list linked below, like I said. So, hope that you guys enjoyed it. Hope that you guys are having a good day, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.